Salute, salute, salute all my generals, all my lions, all my real men, all my queens, all my princesses, all my lionesses. This is Lions and Men. Let's get into it. Hit that like, share, subscribe. Definitely hit that notification bell so you can stay in tune with all the fire content. We're not promoting violence or gang activity in any way, shape, or form. Just providing you with actual details and accurate events that took place while I was incarcerated on Rikers Island Correctional Facility and other jails throughout New York State. Let's get into it. C-74, Ma 8, set you straight. R.I.P. to the King, B.I.G. C-74, Ma 8, 1996. Rikers Island, this had to be the craziest house. I, I, I'll be hearing people talk about, oh, this house is crazy. This is the wildest house. This is the wildest house. Ma 8, for me... My entire bed, all the in and outs on Rikers Island. Like the shit that I saw in Mall Eight was it was different. And when you talking about motherfuckers that had a house on Smash, I'm talking about Super Smash, Super 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 Smash. It, 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 it's like on comparison, I can't even think of no other houses. Like the way these motherfuckers was moving in Mall Eight. It was it was something different. It was a different animal. Like the extortion game was on a thousand. The smuggling game was on a thousand. The bully game was on a million. Yo, the bullies is getting bullied in this house, bro. It was it was it was different. And for me, I was a cub. I was literally a baby. I was scared, nigga. I was 16 years old, right? This is another thing. See, back in my era, in my day. You could be in your 20s and literally be in adolescence. And adolescence is literally 16 to 18, 19, then you go to adults. These motherfuckers is in their 20s. So you got grown ass young men that's fighting bodies, fighting robberies, attempted murders, all type of different kidnappings, assault charges. And these niggas is in there acting like they 16, 17, bro, and they in their 20s. They got the 20-year-old young man body and all that. Like, these niggas was not little kids, bro. And they was all over the fall building my era. All over. And them niggas was the main ones that was running a lot of the houses. These niggas was playing adolescent. They wasn't even adolescent. They didn't want to go to adults. A lot of them didn't want to go to adults. Not because they were scared. But just because it was so, like, they, they, they could do so much in Adelaide. It was running so much shit. It was so comfortable for them. It was fun. Like, they was living great for niggas in prison. As crazy and sad as it may sound. That's a fact. So, I'm going to give y'all an example of how crazy this house was, right? And it's going to lead into stories that, that, that coincide with the extortion game and, and, and the oppression game in, 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 in a facility. In the dormitory for seconds, it was a dorm setting. This is Mall 8. It's not even a cell block. And it was moving, yo, different. So check it out. First off, the dudes that run the house are all in one section in the back of the dorm. They basically got all the last, like, five beds on each row. And it's like four rows in the back. And they all got those roles. It's like, it's literally was like, maybe like the main ones was five niggas. But then you had, and it was segregated like a motherfucker. Literally segregated. All the Spanish people was on the left hand side of the motherfucking um, dormitory. And all the black people was on the fucking right hand side of the dormitory. Straight like that. It was brown and black. And then you had the L section, which is in the front by the bubble. And they called it the L section because the way that the, the bed's designed is in the form of an L. Now, I was in the back, obviously, in the Puerto Rican side. I had just got there. What saved me, in all honesty, that I didn't have to go through as much extreme and crazy shit that niggas was that I seen go through was that some nigga there from the Bronx called Pidufo that was fighting a double homicide. A double homicide put me under his wing. 
he could have he caught a liking to me, and, and and we started. We was around from the same area. He was around Cypress. That's all. That was his stomping ground, Cypress Brook Avenue, all that. So that 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 sheltered me, not sheltered me, but like prevented me from having to go through a lot of other shit that other motherfuckers was going through, and I was seeing it with my own eyes. For example, y'all already heard about the knockout parties, right? They literally at, at night, dudes is calling dudes' bed numbers. I remember the first time they was calling bed numbers and I'm seeing what's happening. Dudes is getting punched in their face and then other dudes is coming up. And, and, and then the dudes is still there waiting for another nigga to punch him in his face. And they're all trying to knock him out and he's there still taking it. And they betting cigarettes. They used to call it keys. I got a key. I got a key. You got a key. I got two keys on that. They used to call cigarettes keys. Then it went to bricks and then whatever the fuck they call it now. So I'm seeing this. I'm like, what the fuck? This shit is crazy. These niggas is grown. These dudes is just sit, like letting dudes just. And these dudes that was running the houses all in their 20s. I want to say they was all in their mid 20s. Like literally. And all these niggas had man bodies. These, none of these niggas was like 150 pounds soaking wet. Like me, I wasn't even 150 at that time. Probably 135 pounds soaking wet. All these niggas is tall, stocky. Like these niggas was grown men, bro. In their 20s. Running a house. And I'm talking about running it the way I've never seen the house run. So first of all, in the morning, dudes is waking you up at 7 in the morning. This is how much they had the house on smash. 7 in the morning, they got the little dojas. You know what I mean? It's the dudes that's trying to get their little weight up, trying to get a little slot time, trying to squeeze in there. Going around, waking niggas up, talking about, yo, you going to use the phone? 7 in the morning. Waking you up, do do do. Yo, you gonna use the phone, nigga? What time is it? It's seven thirty, seven in the morning. Boom, boom. I'm like, why, nigga? Yeah, you got. You wanna use the phone? You gotta use it now, cause once these niggas get up, you ain't getting on. What? Once these niggas get up and they on the phone, nobody's getting on. And they get up like around twelve o'clock. <laughs> what? I'm like, yo, what the fuck? That's how they had the house, bro. Niggas better. One of you wanted to use that phone, boy. You better to use that phone early in the morning. Cause slot time start like before lunch. <laughs> before lunch. And this is no pin numbers, it's it's down nine straight out. So you can call and stay on the phone for as long as you want. Now the phones wasn't that much of a crazy issue for me at this time. Cause like I told you I was a baby to this shit. I was fighting. It was a crazy case actually that I was locked up for. Cause I was locked up for robbing police. I ain't had shit to do with it. Kind of, sort of, but I ended up doing, what, six months, I believe, I laid up on that one. I had to get out of Mar 8 after a while because the only reason why I was in Mar 8 was because I had a, 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 a DFY hold on me. I had a warrant from a juvenile detention facility that I escaped from, Lincoln Hall. I got stories on Lincoln Hall coming up. I escaped from Lincoln Hall like two times. I was a notorious escape artist, I ain't gonna lie. Not notorious, but I escaped from two, three spots. So anyway... Um, Lincoln Hall, I escaped twice. So anyway, now, dudes is waking up, getting on the phone. You get on the phone, I'm like, yo, fuck it. You know what I mean? Let me go get in the shower, wash my ass real quick, because I'm up early in the morning now. I'm going to take a shower, niggas like, yo, 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 what you doing, what you doing, what you doing? One of the same dudes, or one of the black dudes that was in the crib, I guess he was trying to get his little weight up. I'm, them niggas is like, yo, what you doing, what you doing? You know what you mean what I'm doing? I'm going to take a shower. Now you can't take a shower, so they take a shower. Bro? I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, nigga, you got you, you to gotta wait. I mean, the hot water is only in the hot water. They got to take their showers. Nobody can take no showers until after they take a shower, bro. Now, mind you, I'm like, this is like, this is how I'm learning how to shower. I'm like, I can't take a shower until they take a shower. And these niggas is sleeping like King Tux, King, you know what I mean? These niggas, King Alexander, these niggas, these niggas is chilling, laid out in the back, knocked the fuck out. Well, I forgot to tell you, it was drugs galore in the house. So niggas is smoking bud crazy, sipping on nips because police is smuggling alcohol for niggas. Like, these are the rules of the house. You want to use the phone, use the phone early in the morning, but once they turn on until... 12 o'clock, then slot time starts in the afternoon. And after that, nigga, good luck. 
Don't take a shower. Use the shower until they use the shower. And then you know what these cocksuckers do when they get up and take a shower? They use up all the hot water. <laughs> you can't be. I'm like, yo, the first time I was there, because all I'm doing is observing. I'm quiet. I've always been the type of nigga, like, not to really, like, jump out the window type shit. I'm very observant. So I don't know nothing about this shit. This is my first house in C74. Like that I'm that I'm where I'm at. Actually, it wasn't my first house. I went from I was in reception dorm and then I got sent there after court. So anyway, now I'm seeing how this shit is. I'm like, yo, this shit is serious. Like these niggas got the house on Super Smash. The first commissary we go to. Now we go to commissary, right? I ain't have a lot of bread in my shit. I mean, I had a little bum ass, twenty dollars, twenty five dollars, some shit like that. I went, I got my little commissary, got my little cosmetics and all that. Let me put it in my locker, whatever. Got my little chips, cookies, whatever little shit that I could get. But like I said, I ain't had much. I wasn't a boiling ass nigga. I was a little nigga that was in there trying to get the fuck out. You know what I mean? So I'm looking when commissary happens. The dudes that run the house, I'm in their section. They already done G-Check, man. Yo, where you from? Boom, boom. They know I'm from the Bronx. Coincidentally, it was mad Bronx niggas. The only niggas that I was around was from the Bronx, really. Stacy, B. Dufour, Beachy. Them three niggas was the main ones. Then you had um, Fat Guard, some nigga called uh, um, Dead Eye. Not the Dead Eye, they, 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 um, the, the homie Dead Eye. Some whole other Dead Eye. You had some other nigga they called Lion. It was some known hitters there. These niggas was all grown men, though. Be Literally, these niggas was all in their 20s. I was 16. So... Commissary come, niggas is coming back, dudes is putting bags of food all on their bed. I'm seeing random individuals come back with all their commissary and they went heavy. They went the whole limit. I went like a little bum ass 25. All these niggas went heavy and they just dumping bags of commissary in each and every single bag next to me. All five of these niggas. They all had like three different dudes that was going to commissary. For fuck three, they had the whole house going to store for these. They had niggas split up on who shots for them, bro. Now a lot of them dudes that was getting extorted was 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 pedophile, rapo, some bozo ass niggas. I ain't gonna lie, they was locked up for some crazy shit. They was locked up for some crazy shit. And these niggas was extorting the shit out of them to the point where. Like, these niggas is spending the whole commissary dropping it off on all these dudes' bags, right? Then they asking, um, can I get a, can I get at least a cookie and a Kool-Aid, please, to take with me? Motherfucker like, yo, listen, make that shit last. I'm gonna give you a box of cookies. I'm gonna give you a Kool-Aid. Here, nigga, take a bag of chips, too. Maybe a beef steak. Don't come back. Make that shit last, nigga. This ain't welfare. <laughs> yo, I laugh, right? I laugh because I can now. The shit was crazy, it was unreal. The way that they was extorting everybody in that house, my nigga, that wasn't rocking with them. Like, literally, niggas was like really awesome bullshit. And everybody had somebody that they was extorting. I remember I talked on this on one of mine. Most of this I spoke on some earlier videos, but I'm gonna touch up on it because dudes is asking. Niggas wanna know, like, yo, Rikers Island is off the chain right now. I'm not gonna lie. I was there a couple months ago. I was just there. I was there and I seen how it is. I'm still in contact with individuals right now that's on Rikers Island. But the violence is nowhere near. Dudes got bigger guns now. I ain't gonna lie. Dudes got access to mess hole weapons on Rikers right now. They done took over certain shit. But they're not running around chopping shit up like the way shit was getting chopped up during my era, bro. They're not extorting. Look, look, check this shit out. I never forget this shit. Some little nigga called David, little David. He come through, locked up for some drug shit, some bullshit. He got bread though. He came through fly. Nigga had the he had all the ladies drip on. The wolves is on him. They're like this. Oh, look at this nigga. Oh, this nigga. Oh, this nigga. Oh, this nigga. So they end up getting on this nigga, right? They rock the nigga to sleep. They gave the nigga some bud. They had him in the back of the um the dorm. I already knew they was rocking him to sleep. Cause I seen like I heard them niggas talking about it while I was back there. You know what I mean? At that point, I used to always stay on my bed just watching, observing. You know what I mean? Niggas wasn't really fucking with me. They tried to fuck with me in the beginning, but then like P Dufo kind of like shut that shit down. 
And I was always a state of myself type of nigga. I mean, I never was asking to get on the phone, none of that shit. Like, I would get on if I had to get on, I'm get on in the morning. Fuck it. I wasn't with that bullshit yet at this time. Like, I was still, like, learning. Like, I'm seeing how the wolves and the lions is really moving now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm in there with them. I'm seeing firsthand experiences. This is where I learned a lot of my shit from. From these dudes. Seeing how they was moving, how they was doing shit. So, this little nigga David come through. I forget where he from, but he was about that bad. Bro. When I tell you they belittle this nigga, I mean, bro, they, they get him high, right? Rocking him to sleep. The nigga Beachy, he's a grimy Puerto Rican stocky nigga too. I think he was from Huck's Point type area. And these dudes is in there, they rocking the nigga to sleep. Next thing, and we all in the day room watching whatever videos. And he cuff puffing. They making him feel like he cool. Next thing you know, because he was a short nigga, the nigga Beachy just, just like literally just like slapped dog shit out the nigga so hard because he was sitting on a chair smoking. The nigga Beachy said, sorry to him, he said, ah, and just smack, body smack the nigga so hard he almost flipped the nigga off the chair, bro. But Beachy was a big dude. So he slaps dog shit out this nigga and son is like shocked. I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at this shit like, this is going down. Beachy grabbed the nigga by his neck, like picks the nigga up, talking on some Terminator shit. He was like playing with the nigga like toy, da da da, ba, da da da, ba, threw the nigga to the floor, boom. Niggas get up, niggas start stripping the nigga. Bro, I'm talking about belittled the nigga. Yo, they stripped the nigga butt ass snakey. Said, yo, go get the belt, go get the belt. Police in the bubble acting like nothing going on. Everybody else fucking watch TV. Everybody's in the day room, shut the fuck up, watch TV. They got this nigga spread on the table, my nigga. Stomach and chest on the table. Ass out. And they whipping this nigga with a belt. A grown ass man. Well, he wasn't a grown ass man. He was, he was, he was a teenager. Getting his ass whipped by some grown ass man. Butt ass naked, my nigga. I'm like, whipping. Why got that? Why got that? And they laughing. You get this dude that this nigga ass is getting red as motherfucker. But toma, toma. Yo, he whipping the shit out. This nigga crying. They let yo get the fuck dressed. Get dressed. They make the nigga get dressed. They make the nigga get on the phone. They make him get on the phone and call his moms. Niggas get on the phone while he's on the phone with his mom. Mommy, give me the phone. Yo, listen. You want to see your son in one piece? This is what you going to do. Or your son ain't going to make it out of here looking the same. You feel me? That was that was the extortion game. That's how they was on it in there, my nigga. And it, he's just one of them. Every motherfucker that was a sheep, that was a nigga, you came into that house, and, and, and you ain't had nobody to vouch for you. You ain't had you ain't had no type of name recognition. <sighs> Niggas was doing whatever the fuck they wanted, bro. I ain't never seen no crazy booty bandit shit ever happen in front of me. I could vouch for that never. But I heard, you know what I'm saying? And I got stories on some shit also when I was in Attica with this nigga TT. Um, got some stories with that nigga. But anyway, this is just to let y'all know. Rikers Island's always been the devil's den. You feel me? The bullies of the bullies get bullied in there. You feel me? And, 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 and it was serious. And as crazy as it sounds, it was a learning experience for me. They, they, they ended up benefiting me down the long run. Ain't that some crazy shit? Because I was in and out of jail at that time. Y'all already know what it is. Lines and man. Hit the like, share, subscribe. Follow me on IG. Lines underscore N underscore man. One.